This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast here, uh, coming from your Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Uh, the ambassador of awesome. I don't, should not give myself that title. I have worked on my I mind. like it. You like that? I like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're with you today. Myself, a video producer here in the area, podcaster, etc. here in Beachview, but also with us at Big Bank International Esquire is the gadget guru from over there, John Chichilla. Hello, sir. Hey, how's it going? Now you just see cars driving by. I in the love dark. You, you, see, can't, you can't see your side of I the, see the, the town. cars driving by there. And then and then we also have like uh, there's none right now, but you can see the cars driving by in our window in the pre-show. Uh, so we got this working out pretty nicely. Hopefully you see treat for treaters uh, tomorrow when we do that from in here. So looking forward to all that. Uh, so I, I know you've been you were you're just we we're just talking about you were handing out water at, at uh, the Helen Hills 5K in this neighborhood uh, over the weekend. Yep, I handed out water over the weekend. I'll be handing out candy tomorrow. Fantastic! Wait, over here? No, not over there. Oh. I'll be I'll be over here. We'll we'll probably take Christopher out for a little while and then come back and hand out That's candy. And I think my mom will hand out candy while we're taking Christopher out. I want to point out while you were handing out water, he was a zombie trying to scare people at the the, the two mile marker. Yeah, he would. Chris, yeah, Christopher, uh, all four and a half years old, um, was was scaring people dressed up like a zombie mm-hmm. and i was i was handing out water tomorrow he will be going as darth vader i love this freaking holiday also <laughs> that there was darth vader in the race yes that was yes. that was an awesome costume um also with us he is also from big bank international esquire doing fancy technology things over there he is crazy kraus ron kraus joining us how's it going i'm glad we have our windows representative on this on uh, apple, apple day. release day yeah. You know, so you you don't let us go too far off the rails with this. You see, so when we're like really gushing about what happened today, you can be like, "Come on, guys, it's a PC." Yeah. <laughs> the applause. The, Appla- I gotta tell you, yeah. I watched the keynote, and how many times, Chilla, did I send you messages? Oh my God, the applause! I can't stand it. <laughs> it's what we wanted. You don't understand. I've been listening to podcasts every single week. Man, I wish there was an air. Man, I wish there was me. Me personally, man, I wish I could get a new mini. I'm not getting that old one that's like two years old. <laughs> man, you don't know. I was applauding. I was applauding. I was by myself applauding. Also, there was a bar of, bunch of artists, and they were in New York, and they don't get special things like that a lot. They get Samsung being really horrible to women. But anyways, um, <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was like two years ago. Remember? Yeah, yeah, that really horrible. Yeah, like pretty. Like, oh, I need to be in the kitchen with my Samsung phone or something, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. See, that's what the, that's what that's what New York typically gets, apparently. Anyways, um, welcome to the AwesomeCast. No, no, that, we already read that part. Uh, hey, guys, check out everything on AwesomeCast.com and tweet us at AwesomeCast if you are offended by whatever I just said. Um, also, hit us up on the Facebook. That's where we are here live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Also, uh, playing around with streaming over on the Sorgatron Media uh, social medias as well. As well as apparently on Xbox. <laughs> I forgot I made a Mixer account for that. Um, and also hit us up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. And, uh, and uh, you can subscribe and rate the show on your favorite podcast pr- uh, you know, thingy. Thingy? Provider. <laughs> provider. Podcast provider. Podcatcher. Oh, boy. This is going to be a fun one. Um, and uh, also uh, video versions on Facebook and YouTube. And thank you to our streaming partners, our friends at RiversEdgePGH.com. They carry us, uh, replay us every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. And also the 405media.com, our friends on the West Coast that carry us every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern, so you can catch up on the latest episode. 
If you are interested in being our, in our studio audience or advertising on the show, hit up Producer Missy at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com, or you can support the show directly at patreon.com slash awesomecast, including our Coffee Club $5 uh, friends, Matt Weller and John Diggy DeGore. They're going to be getting some gold this week where we talk about the story behind Chilla's fancy pin. Fancy new Apple pin. And the, the, the high sacrifice that came with it. Well, I'm hoping that I can continue to procure these pins. Well, I guess not even procure. Collect these pins. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What favors did Chilla have to do? The answer oh, that's may, classified. The only answer gold may knows. Sur- only what? Only gold knows. Only nose. gold knows. Five dollars. Patreon.com slash awesomecast. And also, that's how you put it over. Also, uh, thank you to our friend, a long, probably the longest uh, Patreon supporter uh, as of now, uh, Mike Fedor at the fan of the show dollar level. You guys support the show. Patreon.com slash awesomecast. Literally help us keep the lights on here in the studio. <laughs> yeah, look at those caps that Missy's putting in the document. We'll get to those. But in the meantime, um, listen, there's going to be a lot of Apple things today. Let's be honest about this. It's going to happen. Yep. I'm going to say that's why we got Krause here to just, just make sure everything's cool and even handed. We want to be fair to both sides. By the way, I, I just booted up like two Android devices in the last week again. I, I just want to point that out. I mean, I'm not outside the zone. Also, really sad that my Nexus 7 only is up to version 6 of Android. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> security updated to 2016, buddy. Nice. Um, but uh, what is going on, Kraus? That's probably the worst intro I could have given you this That's story. okay. <laughs> well, just because I know it's going to be Apple-centric, I had to bring this, raise this point, Android, new Android device. The OnePlus 6T. This is the flagship running at a much lower price. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this device or not, but it's very exciting. It's got a tiny nubbin at the top. A very it's t- a, it's, yeah, it's, it's it, only got a nubbin. It's not a it's, it's not, not a, a full notch. Not a full notch, just a nubbin. And the specs on this phone are quite impressive. Um, you know, the starting price is five forty nine. dollars mm-hmm. uh, 6 gig of RAM, which seems 128 mod- which, gigs of memory. Jeez, which seems modest for a phone these days, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, though, and this just raises the point, and Chilla and I talk about this often at lunch, because my argument is, how long can the madness continue? Because <laughs> when you start looking at these, you know, over- one thousand dollar devices mm-hmm. how long can this once a year rat race continue and i just i thank one plus for coming out with this very well appointed device at a reasonable price and and this is their first real um, you know, major release in the U.S., so I'm excited to see that. This isn't the first phone they put out, obviously. It's the OnePlus 6. They started with OnePlus 1. And uh, so this isn't their first rodeo or anything, but it is their first major U.S. release. And I, I'm just excited to see, because, again, like we always talk about, you know, the more carriers there are, the more competition there is, mm-hmm. the more it should help drive down price. And mm-hmm. I don't agree. You know, I, yes, I own this phone when it came out was a you know $1,000 phone, but that's because of what I do for a living. But most people walking around in the world don't need the phone, to uh, the horsepower, you know, to pay for that. They can't afford that. They just can't. And I love, I just love seeing it. I love mm-hmm. seeing very well spec phones coming out at that you know five hundred, six hundred dollar price point, and it's a great phone. It really is twenty megapixel rear facing camera, sixteen megapixel front facing camera, USB C doesn't have a headphone jack. Oh. do people really worry about that anymore? I mean, it's a pain in the ass. I wish I had one. Do you really? I do. Um, I just so, oh, I but also, care less. I mean, I mean, also atypical of like, I'm sitting there at a, a, a pod con and I was like, man, I could just throw on some uh, Google music. Oh, no, I can't. Cause I can't literally cannot interface with the audio equipment in front of us. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, that, that's the see, kind of, yeah, thing. but you have a, you're a special case. I know I'm special. You need, you you need a dongle. 
Yeah, dongle I, uh, it up, man. I have a dongle somewhere. <laughs> you got a free. But your, the problem your is, came with a free. The dongle. problem is, I don't have the dongle where I need it. Ah. So you need a dongle case or something. I need a dongle on my person at all times. You need like you need to do something. I bet you they sell one that goes on your keychain. Ooh, Ooh. keychain dongle. Yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. I'd be worried about the wear and tear on that. I'm pretty tough on my keychain. Uh, um, from the chat uh, about the insta, <laughs> partner is saying uh, with the installment plans, it can keep going. The madness can keep going. Exactly yeah, though, yeah. and that's what I'm talking about. But man, and dude, everybody's doing it now. Okay. We're about but to the, talk about twelve hundred dollar laptops, okay? I know. This is we're in a world of twelve hundred dollar laptops. Twelve hundred dollar about and, and two core laptops. Much, oh and, my and god! Other devices that are expensive that you can pretty much do all the things you need to on them, right? Again, if I wasn't a special case, I maybe would just have an iPad at this point, right? So when we're looking at our phones in a thousand dollar phone, no, that makes sense for as much as I'm able to. Comp- Complete on my phone without even going to a computer at this point. It, so then, and the the average the average consumer it has now it, it's reached the point where the average consumer replaces their phone every three years. Mm-hmm. So where it used to be like every eight eighteen months, and then it went to two years. It's now at three years. I want I want to have a conversation here too because we're always listening to our podcast where people are getting this, and they in their minds they're seeing them and their their compatriots getting the yearly phone or every two year phone. Right? These are not normal people. Right. Right. These are not the everyday people that walk into an Apple store or an AT and T store and get these phones that we're talking about today. Like the, so so for me to drop twelve hundred dollars on a phone. Knowing it will last me for sure the next two years very easily, and even I'm feeling less concerned with is traffic weird out there? Yes, hello, Beachview, weird backy uppy things. Um, I think you saw some taillights there, but uh, um, I mean, it's you're buying the computer you're gonna use all the time for the next two years. Think about it that way, think about it that way. And the computer that I'm going to spend twenty five hundred dollars on, um, I'm just thinking about replacing my twenty thirteen model. Like this is this is the mind frame I'm thinking going into this. No, and and I get it. My wife's still running the um, iPhone six, I believe it is, with our replacement mm-hmm. battery. Remember yeah. the last time I was on, I we talked about how we took it out to the Apple store. We have five S's with brand they new repl- batteries. Replace yeah. the battery, and, and yeah. it's great, and she's happy. You know, granted, she could use a little more space, but mm-hmm. that's about the only problem she has with that device. Uh, Podner saying he plans they, he plans on having his iPhone X for another two years. I mean, it's, you get that bump, right? It's like you know that's enough for you to get everything done you need done, and then you get that that special bump after three years. You just the, have to- the ten R. The ten R is only seven forty nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it and its display is bigger than the ten S. Oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't have the dual, dual camera. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think the madness will continue, but I also I think the thinking is changing too. Yeah, but I just I I worry because okay, so the trend is becoming, well, people are getting on a three year cycle. Mm-hmm. So then, what are the phone companies doing? They're saying, oh, come in, pay fifty bucks a month. Yep. Forever. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Actually, exactly. And that's well, how they have to change the conversation. If the majority of Android's Android devices would update yearly, we wouldn't have this problem. There you go. There <laughs> you go. I, you know, Android, what do you mean that we wouldn't have this problem? Who do you know that's had a three-year-old uh, Android device and, and still getting updates? Oh, and still getting updates? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> Wait, I do. That's a problem. They say this will go for three they years. They say. They say. Yeah. How's that practice? They, they said that about the, uh, the seven-inch... Nexus too. <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah. true. Yeah, um, and, your and, yeah your and your Pixel C. Yeah, Pixel C. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, 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 and that's Google. That's that is Google. Google. Versus, thanks, there Google. are, <laughs> thanks guys. Versus, there are people with five S's still rolling. Yeah, right. Uh, probably not for long, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Chilla, I think because I'm getting asked by a producer if we're still on uh, uh, yours or we moved into Chilla's awesome thing. I think we just did. Uh, Chilla, what is the rest of your awesome thing? Is it just all Apple? 
No, no, I, d- I, d- I did a single story. Okay, okay. So mine's the um, announcement of the new iPad Pro. Mm-hmm. Full screen design, new Apple Pencil, and smart keyboard folio. Um, this device was super interesting to me as a iPhone on my second iPhone 10 device, the 10s um, face ID has become part of my daily daily usage. And I love it. I couldn't, I don't want to go back to having a button and I don't want to go have to go back to touch ID. Um, today's device has face ID, um, the a 12 bionic chip. What I found interesting about this is they have bumped this the local storage up to one terabyte. Holy, I, that's more than if I was getting a. Uh, I was looking at prices for the max. Right, <laughs> like I said, this is Apple just saying, "Look, we don't want to build the Mac anymore." Uh, I'm sorry, I, but I, they're I'm, definitely they're definitely that that price versus yeah no 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 you're right. No, you're. I don't know. It's a transition, yes. right? It's a transition, and when they here, here will be where I say. See, I disagree with. I think they. I don't think they want to build the Air and the Pro. Or I'm sorry, I don't think they want to build the Air and the MacBook. Nothing. Mm-hmm. I think they want to build even the Mac Mini. I mean, come on, we are. On, 1,475 days without an update yeah. or without an upgrade. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they want the Mac Pro, the MacBook Pro, and the iPad. Next, and let's call it a day. Next thing, something is, is long in the tooth like that, I want to start a counter, <laughs> right? So, But the other thing that I was really surprised about, and this is, Kraus, to your point, you know, really making that transition, there is no more, while well, there's, there's no more headphone jack, Pour one out for that, but there's also no more lightning port. <laughs> We've gone USB C, folks. Oh, this hurts me. And this hurts me. The interesting oh, congratulations, thing, Apple. Welcome to the party. Uh, the interesting thing is, is they're up play. See, I feel like where others have done this, other than Samsung with the deck stock, no one has really up played the versatility of the USB C port. Mm-hmm. Oh, Today yeah. they ta- they talked about plugging it directly into 5K displays, mm-hmm. so it's, it doesn't just support 4K five through that USB C port. It's five of the Ks, five of the Ks, all of the K. Well, no, not all of the Ks because there is what there are more Ks. There are yeah. more Ks. Yes. Um, so so to explain. So okay, so you can you can attach your iPad to a 5K display. What does that mean? Is it just repeating that, or is are there going to be applications that are going to do sort of a multi monitor thing? Like 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 they the the examples they showed, and if you look at if you go down where to the one terabyte USB C section, there's the picture of the woman with it plugged directly in. Mm-hmm. It's actually using the monitor as a secondary monitor. So ideally, I could <laughs> if they make it this way, take iMovie. I'm editing an iMovie on the iPad, and now I can have a secondary monitor that shoots the full res output. That's what it looks like. Yeah, they, and it looks like that woman is working on some kind of video time. We will. They, they we had will. The Adobe demo. The Adobe demo demo was nice. Yeah. So that was well. That was I guess editing uh, well, photos. For, for those that don't know, that that was um, it was full Photoshop, touch enabled. enabled. With the pencil and everything, um, it, but it was like all the all your palettes and and all of your options looked like they were there. I'm sure it's not absolutely everything you can do on Photoshop on a PC. You know, there's some 3D stuff and everything like that. But it was just like, oh wait, no, it was enough to be like, oh that's Photoshop. Yeah. And I can't, I don't think it's a pulled back version of Photoshop. No. So. Well, the graphics power they compared. During the what was it the Xbox One S mm-hmm. uh, graphics capabilities on the iPad Pro, so that's mm-hmm. that's think about it. That's a they said handheld it, device. What did they say is faster than like ninety three percent of the machines, including like popular i seven machines? Yeah, 
that is impressive. So now it's like, okay, where's the software to do it? I don't think you're going to get a ton, a ton, ton of it. But as long as Photoshop shows up, as long as a Final Cut shows up. Um, That's where I think if when, when we see Final Cut show up. Game over. I think, game I, over. I think, that, I think the Macs are... There's going to be shock and awe to the Mac line. Uh, yes. I well, I, So I think you still have a removal of, you know, certain things need to happen, the way things are organized, da 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 It needs to be a desktop environment. But the more that you can do with an iPad, the more it chips away at needing a PC, right? What, what I want to see is... <laughs> Dude, Krauss has got the finger pointing like, I got it. <laughs> what, what, what I want to see is... And, and I've seen this happen with a number of other devices. What happens when the first person plugs a USB-C hub into this thing? Oh. Because when you think about it, if it's USB-C, and if you if you really know what you're doing with an iPad today and, and, a, and a camera connector kit, you can plug in a USB Ethernet dongle. You can plug in a USB keyboard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can plug, I mean, you can plug in a number of USB devices and now it's going to do video. Um, I have a feeling it's not too long before. And, and that's the other thing they upplayed was the ability to plug into um, music, like creative music type hardware peripherals. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're going to see a ton of external hardware support for these devices. I'm excited to see what happens with that. You know, not to jump because we haven't talked about the other two parts of this, of their announcement. We will in a moment. But you know how they were talking about how you could take the new the new laptop and connect it somehow back to the new um, a Mini? What if you could do the same thing with the iPad? Hmm. So what if you had the Mini and the iPad Pro, and you could offload? Oh, you're some talking about uh, you're work. talking about how you could do your work on your MacBook, and then you like render or and send stuff, code over right. to a Mac Mini. What if you could do the same thing? So if if iPad had like Q Master support, exactly to send, to send processes over to your Mac Mini through that. Because why oh, couldn't you use the oh, USB-C oh, oh. for that? Oh, geez. Just your network. You know, all you need is your network. Okay. Point, I think. But, yeah. And I feel like they kind of alluded to that in the whole Mac Stadium section. Did you see where there was that farm of Mac Minis? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, okay, so then you're talking iPad Pro and a Mac Mini, and that's your studio sort. Mm-hmm. Touch. Oh, hey, that's my awesome thing of the week. Because, hey, guess who needs a new MacBook? This guy, because I cracked the screen. Um, and instead of dropping another five to $600 on replacing that screen on my 2013, let's put that money towards a Mac Mini. Now, I am sad that we have gone from 500 to $800 for the base. But, man, we're getting a lot out of it for the Mac Mini. It's going to be uh, six to eight cores. Uh, is it eight, six? No, it was four to six, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Four yeah, to six. Four to six. Um, and, and I was excited when they said these are not laptop parts. Yes. We are getting desktop class stuff in the Mac mini. That's an argument. When, when I was looking at Mac minis, um, I believe AJ, you know, I have a 2011 over here that I'd like to get fixed to do some things with some like kind of background server things with. Um, so, uh, Amanda, I'll be joining the Mac store, uh, or Apple store sooner or later to get that looked at. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> but, uh, there's a lot of possibility there. Like that is a desktop. Like I don't need the insane 4K display uh, iMac. I would rather put that to say, let's say twelve hundred dollars into having more power in that machine, and that's what a Mac Mini does for me. Um, I also consider because I was originally going to just replace it with a MacBook Pro, but if you look at it, I could probably get. <laughs> A Mac Mini and an Air for the price of the MacBook Pro, I would be eyeing to replace. Yeah, you probably Which, could. And and the Airs being upgraded are significantly powerful enough to do some things and expandable because of USB C. And maybe I don't know, maybe we'll get a external graphics processor to start rendering some of these videos at some point if it makes sense, right? Um, or be able to throw stuff to the Mac Mini if I'm editing on the on the Air and on the network and, and doing a thing. 
So now I've fully expanded, doubled my potential for the same price. That that's kind of the thought process I'm, I'm now. I'm just and yes, the applause. Damn it, Kraus. Damn it, it's deserved. Damn it, they kept holding back on us, and damn it, they finally delivered for us. Yes, I just don't understand. And, and they admit, delivered on not, what's that? I was not overly thrilled with the air announcement. Okay. I agree, but okay. they, but I will say the Mac Mini really would, brought it home. It's a it's not a matter that they really went out of the ballpark with these things, but the fact that they paid any attention to it, um, these dear these dear pieces of our soul of our technological soul that they have neglected for the uh, last few years. It, it really is an abusive la- relationship in the end. Um, but, you know, but we're, we're, we're on the upside <laughs> right now. So, no, I, you know, I'm happy to see that. And it, it, is, it is stuff that I'm going to be considering and um, trying to budget for here in the next uh, few months. And hopefully I'll get one. Hopefully, uh, hopefully by the end of the year I, I, I can get my hands on one of those and, and – uh, kind of see how they, they go. I'm um, also happy that we have two classic USB ports in there because I already have everything strung to two classic USB ports in my MacBook Pro. So, yeah. That's fun. All right. On that note, let's give a shout out to our friends. Be- sp- speaking of giving love to classics, our friends at Comic Book Pit Podcast. Uh, the Comic Book Pit is Pittsburgh's longest running comic book podcast. I got to join them. Uh, I was invited out to uh, New Dimension Comics, Three Rivers Comic Con, uh, hosted a uh, karaoke um, cosplay night out at Hard Rock Cafe uh, here in Pittsburgh, and I got to judge the performances I uh, I put in for um, the Rocketeer who did tequila. More performance, less singing, so that worked out. Uh, also partying with our friends uh, also here on the network from the Pittsburgh Current, Bethany Rue. She was doing the singing portion, and there was another lady that was doing the uh, cosplay portion. Uh, it was a lot of fun over there. But uh, this podcast, our friends at the Comic Book Pit, bring the fun conversational atmosphere to both long-time uh, comic book fans and new readers and covers comic-related news across all media types, from movies, television, insider industry news, to reviews of weekly comic books. You can find out more at Comic Book Pit. Dot com and they've been doing um i believe they're going to be coming up i'm trying to remember the next date off the top of my head i think a sunday coming up um they're going to be recording once again here in the studio and look out to their facebook page because they do go live and they do about two episodes at a time you can uh participate with them live as you go so comicbookpit.com so chilla um i i i found this um thing on Indiegogo to actually by way of next Pittsburgh, it is a uh, and I apologize guys on the video we're having some I'm kind of shorthanded on technology here. This is why you need to buy multiple backs. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's called Nibble N Y B B L. It's a cute robotic kitten on a mission. Wow, that is really the title there, isn't it? Uh, Pittsburgh-based computer scientist uh, Doctor Oh, I'm not saying that. Uh, Unveil Nibble. <laughs> So they're doing a Kickstarter, or I'm sorry, an Indiegogo for it. Um, it is, it is a a mechanical cat that um, that that you can learn to code with uh, for kids. Um, you, you can check out the uh, the progress on YouTube and uh, so, uh, and the software development platform for it on GitHub. Um, it went viral on in February th- this year. I'm, I'm amazed that we didn't come across this. It is like a, a scary skeletal cat, a little bit here, um, but uh, but kind looks, of fun. Looks kind of like it's made out of wood. It does a little bit. Um, like it looks like it's sort of made out of one of those um, one of those like remember the dinosaurs you used to be able to get that were like wood like flat wood and you you'd punch them out and build like a a wooden dinosaur of sorts. It yes, does, it does feel yeah. like it's that, and it's got a little bit of the mechanics in there, um, and, you know. But you can you can program it to like you know speed up and slow down and and dur- do certain like motions. Um, <laughs> there was one where they like dropped it to see if it would land on its feet, which it kind of did. But they also said don't try this at home at that point. But uh, no, it, it, it's over there. Like I said Indiegogo. It's a nibble. And it's there, and there's an article on nextpittsburgh.com. You can check it out. It's a, uh, it's pretty cool. I, I did tell Dutters that maybe cause she's got a really old cat. And I was wondering if she could transfer the soul of her cat, um, to into it so it can live for another hundred years. So here it is. It's waving at you in this picture that won't load. So, um, no, but go check it out. Nibble, and it's a, a local hit here 
um, going on. Um, also, just double checking on these. Um, they have officially announced, I feel like we've been here before. Um, the Mario Kart, did, was there a new announcement on Mario Kart for mobile? Did we finally get a date? Is that the difference here? It's next year, though, isn't it? It's still next year. But uh, I know. Yeah, Mario Kart was it? Mario Kart. I was surprised because I thought it. Was, I thought it was going to be here for Thanksgiving. Okay, so you can um, survive Thanksgiving with Mario Kart. I could survive Thanksgiving. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it, it, actually, Christopher's waiting for it. He's he asks probably every couple of weeks. Is Mario Kart because, out yet? <laughs> is, is it, actually, he says, "Is it Thanksgiving yet?" But it's because. He knows where he thought, or mm. I thought, Mario Kart would have been out for Thanksgiving. Still, so, but it, so, so but it's is... into some, it's somewhere into next year. And I was not to not to sidebar us from this because I do want to talk about this. I was surprised because I've been trying to watch the time for release of Metroid mm -hmm. for Switch, mm -hmm. and that is now like they they're definitely getting that in under the wire. I think that release date is like December twenty eighth. Oh wow. Jeez, Nintendo, what are you doing? You're doing so good. There was a, there was a, there was one um, story um, that might be in the rundown later, but it's associated. Uh, the, uh, Nintendo Switch has passed GameCube in lifetime sales. Oh wow! So, but GameCube wasn't really huge. Um, it was like probably the number two next to uh, PlayStation Two and uh, Xbox Original. So I don't know. Um, I feel did, like didn't it's the we, console. Didn't that... we outsource? Out sell a cube oh for sure for sure yeah. but i mean it's just a a seeing where you at and i think it, a long time ago it already had outsold um wii u um numbers i don't know i feel like it's the 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 console i carry around everywhere but i always forget to play hmm. i don't have a whole ton of games for it so mm -hmm. i don't know it's just i'm just a tv guy i guess I you're just know. a tv guy I like my Xbox. And, but I'll my be couch. I'll be honest with you though. We use we use the the dock with the switch hooked up to the TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean it, and it works well. I mean we have I don't have a lot of games either. I probably have like four or five games. Mm -hmm. Um, but switching it from the I play Zelda a lot by myself. Um, but then plugging it into the TV with the two we have the steering wheel controllers yeah um and playing mario kart and disney cars 3 um it's it's a I, it's a lot of fun and it's one of those things we actually i we didn't pull it out because it didn't rain but i also took it on vacation with us just in case there was a, a day of rain at the beach mm -hmm. we oh, were right, stuck yeah. in the hotel room and you have all your console games and i have yeah i have all my games well, uh, and features. when when christmas hits and i'm waiting to to get some time off um I'm actually gonna get the the um online so I can get the Mario Brothers and the the original Zelda and all that <clears throat> for free. Nice. Uh Dave Potter reminds us if you like your live videos that you uh can do on the uh iPhone. That's when you take a picture and there's a little bit of video before and after mm -hmm. that that it captures. Uh you can take that and uh if you use Google's motion stills app like he did with his uh race day. Uh, from Hell on Hills, you can make a little uh, video diary for it. So, because uh, I was watching this and I couldn't figure out, I was like, "Wow, why is this like kind of all over place video?" And I realized it's like now I'm realizing like, "Oh, it's all of his pictures." Very cool. And all the all the like momentary. <laughs> I love I love especially at the end. There's just a moment there like him trying to hold still with his medal up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, after after racing the most insane 5K in the area. Uh, oh, so good stuff. Th thank you for that. Um, and also, this one was also from Riz in our video game one. Um, and I was talking with our friend, the game guy, uh, Max, over at, uh, at the Post Gazette uh, about this on Twitter. Um, they released the list for the PlayStation Classic. And I, I think it's a pretty. So it seemed. So my comment was it kind of seemed everywhere, but PlayStation was really kind of everywhere, wasn't it? When it came to this stuff. We're talking about like, like they have Metal Gear Solid, the original. We have uh, Final Fantasy VII. Um, weird little things from the from the beginning, like Jumping Flash. They do have Tekken Three, but they also have like Battle Arena to Shinden, which maybe wasn't the best 3D fighting game, but also it was like one of the earliest. 
and kind of like one of those examples of like, oh, this is the kind of stuff we can do here, um, I feel. So, you know, I, I think that's a pretty cool mix up of that. I think they said it was about 30 games, 20 games. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Definitely missing um, Parappa the Rapper. Um, they do have uh, Resident Evil Director's Cut, uh, Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey. Did, 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 Intelligent Cube is one I played with. The original Grand Theft Auto, the top-down one. Destruction, oh, wow. Destruction Derby. I had that for the PC. It mm-hmm. was phenomenal. Uh, Destruction Derby, Cold Border, Borders 2, Rayman, the original Rayman, um, Revelation Persona, I don't know, Ridge Racer Type 4, and oddly, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, Siphon Filter, Twisted Metal, Wild Arms, and uh, the original Rainbow Six game. Which, man, I don't think that holds up very well. I think that's good. It's about $100. A little more a little more than what you get for the Nintendo. But, like, I mean, kind of more broader games. Well, too. everybody's going to get their cut, too. You know, all those, yeah. dev- all those yeah. games. Yeah, these are aren't all-, all Sony games. Right. <laughs> so, like, there's, there's, there's Capcom. There's Konami. Um, there's Rockstar. There's Squaresoft uh, represented in there. And I'm sure I'm <gasps> missing. Uh, um, um, who's Tekken? Who does Tekken? Uh, Namco? Is that right? Namco Band. Yeah, there is a yep. good bit in there. You, did you notice the one thing it doesn't come with? Hmm. An AC adapter. Wait, it's just a USB cable. Oh, so it's yep. just like, I mean, it's just like a RetroPie. Like you just yeah. USB plug in something. So um, AC adapter, HDMI. Um, it's a, wait, two, it's just two. like a RetroPie. <laughs> That's a hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh, you didn't see what they were selling the retro prize for at Replay FX. Oh boy. Yeah, I'll pay a hundred fifty dollars for that. Two hundred fifty dollars really? for that. Yeah. But they were in the Nintendo case, so you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh anyways, hey, you know what is definitely worth the money that you unfortunately won't find at a table at Replay FX. Our friends at Slice on Broadway, right up the road here, SliceOnBroadway.com, our good friends, the original, the OG, hence the name. Of course, they're over in the East End, the Carnegie PA location and PNC Park home, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Probably pretty lonely over there right now uh, this time of year, but uh, still, they're there, and you guys can get your uh, Slice fixings uh, on that, and I believe Uber Eats and stuff of us serves them. Um, so go check them out. Support our friends that have been supporting us with the perfect pepperoni pizza and for podcasting in Pittsburgh. Krause has been digging it. That's the first thing you did. He's like, yes, let me did. add this pizza. He like shoved me out of the way. and said, let me add this pizza. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Recreation, creative license, uh, Krause. That's what happens. Uh, check out our friends, sliceonbroadway.com. So here's a story I missed last week since we were kind of still on the video game kind of line of things. Taco Bell has a limited edition Xbox One that makes the bong sound at startup. <laughs> but you have to win that, right? You have to win that. No, this just... is a contest, yes. It's going to be rewarded every 10 minutes between October 18th and November 21st. Um, there was, uh, and then, so you're missing it. So, so I'm in, I got to go get some more Taco Bell. Um, see so the rules on the site. So wait, wait, what do you got to do? Because that was just at Taco Bell. What did I miss? I saw the thing there. But you have to was, buy the box. I have they to have buy a, the box. There's a specific. Um, there's a couple different box deals, aren't there? You can get. Yeah, there's they, more than one box on the menu. They yeah, love the but box. There, but there's a. I thought there was a specific. Box. You need to purchase a double chalupa box for five dollars. Beginning. There you yes. Go. So we're gonna get Missy. We're going to Taco Bell. How are you in chalupas? Every 10 minutes you for like the chalupas? next month. Yeah, chalupas. Because we got like breakfast, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, baby. Got to get our bong Xbox. It's weird to say that by itself. <laughs> it's a very cool Xbox. <laughs> it is. It is, actually. And so. it comes with the, um, what's the good controller? The new, uh, Ooh. the white. Oh, um, the Elite. The Elite, the elite is controller. It elite? Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Oh, boy. You know, thank you, Taco Bell, for just finding new ways to continue to be into. Yeah, yeah. Um, So this was, uh, we, you know, we've been talking about a lot of Pokemon. Chilla? I'm still I'm still collecting them all. Yeah, I'm still in the process I'm sure as I'm well. I'm sure I'm missing a bunch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but 
so this this is um, there was some code that they found with this, and 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 there's a little bit of an announcement. But uh, Pokemon Go will soon track your activity without launching the app with what they're calling Adventure Sync, which is going to use HealthKit and Google Fit to track your steps. So the idea that I've been reading from this, and I think again partially from their announcement, and partially some people have uh, dug into the code a little bit. Um, and found some things, including new new um, um, icons that that lead to health kit and things like that. Um, so the idea is it won't be like on all the time. Well, from what I read, it's going to check into your health kit because you know you have that that M processor on on an iPhone that's always checking your steps or something, or maybe you have it linked to an Apple Watch, right? So it's going to check in every hour to see your steps and, of course, update your game progress based on those steps. So whether that's like getting candy from your EV, which is good because I freaking need those EV candies for that thing. Professor, you asshole. I'm still trying, but <laughs> excellent curveballs are impossible, okay? Uh, I'm anyways. still trying to get the free the free bass. I got to get the free bass to 100K. It's ridiculous. The, the magic carp? No, the, the um, isn't it free bass? Mm, I don't know what that is. Free? Yeah, it's the Feebas, F-E-E-B-A-S. Oh. It's one of the fish. Oh. It looks like, it looks like this guy. Oh, I did not Oh, cool. That. Okay. So, so to, so to it, it's like a, it's, it's like a hidden thing, I think. Well, so that will you, help you. have to though. know that it's there. The only way to actually evolve him is to wow. get him to 100K. Mm. So I've been walking him for months. <laughs> <laughs> that's I love this. it's like taking it where, out but, of leash. but that's where like oh, somebody's playing Pokemon I got yeah. it every time because I don't fire up Pokemon every time I get up from my desk right no and I don't even fire it up like when I'm getting on the elevator and going to the tea in the afternoon you even just pull it up on your on your watch or something to track those steps nah no and, and here's the kicker too is because it and and maybe this will help me with with health kit because I didn't like the way that it overrode the Apple Health stuff at the gym. I actually tried to use it on the treadmill because you can actually set it up where you can do like a treadmill workout. And I didn't like the way that it tracked my progress and I lost a bunch of the, the metric data mm-hmm. by not using the Apple workout app that I don't even use it at the gym when I could be earning stuff on the treadmill or on, on whatever. Chill. You need to properly use, you don't want to lose your steps. I know your body knows, but we got to make sure Pokemon knows too. Yes. <laughs> also, if I can pump them out of health kit now, that's perfect. Also, whenever I don't uh, wear my watch, because maybe like I'm having a skin irritation or I need to charge it and forget to put it back on my, my sleep watch app is very worried about me. Nice. Yes. Uh, okay, I just closed all the stories. <laughs> uh, Chill, is there anything else you wanted to touch on here while I'm uh, getting back into it? Uh, the only thing, the only other thing out of the, the back to the Apple announcements, the I, I was pretty impressed with the Apple Pencil. It was actually, it's actually, I, I have one, I use it, I like it, mm-hmm. but my gripe is I don't always remember to charge it and having to plug it into a lightning port or or bring along the extra special dongle mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> for the for the for the pencil extra um, special dongle you know i think that's how i feel about the, like like apple watch because i'm like oh, i should just buy another then i'm like oh i don't want to see how much those are yeah those aren't bad you can get one for like 30 bucks yeah 30 um, bucks is not bad yeah for a quarter the, <laughs> it's it's more expensive than the nine dollar headphone dongle you won't get either so yeah 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 you, you won't Here be we go. less than dongle Listen, listen, man. It's not all roses over here, okay? We get it. We get it. But it's fancy and it's pure white, and it's that means it's, it just feels it's we at least we get our updates, okay? Has anybody noticed Sorg is very argumentative today? <laughs> I just see he's, you glaring at me. He's very he's very slammed animated. His fist and I yeah, can't find right. my my other extra one. But the new Apple Pencil doesn't have the same charging mechanism it's charged by magnetically attaching the pencil to the device which i'm super happy about and holy yeah right apple just suddenly went wireless charging for everything Mm -hmm. yep that's awesome the the thing that i'm not happy about is that this is the third generation where they've changed the form factor and dimensions of the device 
right. which means that none of your old Apple keyboards work. Mm. Um, your old pencil doesn't work now. Um, that kind of bums me out. What The one thing I will say about this, though, is I was surprised to see they kept the iPad Pro 10.5 inch around at a $649 price point. So they're going to continue to sell one model back and the two current generations. Makes sense. I mean, I mean, because there's a lot of people that just don't need that new stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So question, if you're buying a Pro, are you buying the, uh, the smaller one now or are you going for the big one that's a sheet of paper? I go, I go for the small one. Oh, really? Wow. So I went, I went, so, so as I'm on my second iPad pro, um, <laughs> the first one I got was the nine, seven pro. Right. Then I got the 10, five pro. I would stick with 10, five personally. Well, it's 11 um, now though, right? Or no, sorry. They... Yeah, it's 11, five now, but it's like in the 10, five case. So it's about the same size. So um, magic. So it's almost the size of an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. Well, that's what I'm they not said. going. That's I'm not what they jo- said I know people pros. that have the the big one, like like Mister Sorg over there. Oh, um, I haven't seen my big uh, yet iPad. Another yet another device with a broken screen. Yeah, I haven't seen um, my my big iPad for several months. Um, yeah, no. Oh, yeah. It's been it's it was in it, it's in the repair shop, as in it's in California. Oh, okay. <laughs> with the person that can fix it. Okay, there's no quotes for the person that can fix it she can actually fix it uh but um but man those screens are expensive uh <laughs> but i've been uh, chilla i've been still uh getting by on your ipad 3 here and there you'd be amazed what hey, still works on that thing it still it still powers up not hbo apparently um but, <laughs> uh but you know netflix hulu um and the xfinity app yeah like actually were so i mean it's good for watching video so i actually tried installing it um, because uh, Missy picked up the uh, iPad holder um, for the car that uh, that Brian had, Brian Crawford had, had suggested like like months ago, and I was like, wait, I should do something with this. So I, I put um, my iPad in there, which I realized might be heavier than her iPad, and maybe that's why it didn't work so well because it kept like falling off, <laughs> like it kept like not being upright as I'm driving, ah. uh, kind of thing. So I just I can't use the old one. What did you want to use it for? Um, kind of the display sort of advertising while I'm driving Lyft. Because oh. somebody actually inquired about that. Um, that I was speaking with. And I was I wanted to, because I have like a slideshow you've seen when you come in here. Like I have kind of a slideshow of like stuff we're doing and shows coming up for wrestling and stuff that, that displays out here, you know, to the, mm-hmm. the monitors uh, for people walking by. So I just wanted something that was going to play that. Okay. You know, so just for something, and it was like, you know, it was up there. I didn't want to put it on the back of the seat so I could grab it. It seemed too clunky when I tried doing that before with one of the iPads. Um, but I was trying that with like an iPad 1 and like a Gorilla Pod that I just wrapped around the headrest of the seat. So I haven't found like a good way to do it. So I, I keep poking at it every once in a while because um, if it's something where, uh, you know, I feel like I could like sort of sell advertising while I lift, like it's another income generator, and I'm always just looking for different ways i also started thinking about my podcast project again uh and some other alternative ideas have popped up too i was literally just driving around thinking about how i could do a cash cap type show that would be awesome i like i'm like what needs to happen okay what technically what can i do with x y and z what do i have that i could work with it like this was this while one guy was i was eerily quiet taking one guy to his stop because i'm just like thinking about it right but yeah this is what i do this is, <laughs> this is this is why I lift so I can like process ideas, right? Yeah, like it really is kind of my meditation time. Well, and if you're getting paid to do it, why? That's not? right. That's right. Having good conversations and and make some new friends. So, all right. Oh, what else is in here for us to chat about here? Uh, Cross, is there anything that uh, we missed that you want to get at? No, I'm good actually. Did we talk about enough Apple for you? Yeah, no, it hasn't actually been too bad. <laughs> um, I did like this story. Hello. Um, well, was that me or you? It was me. Oh, okay. Um, Motorola and iFixer are, are selling um, do, 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 an official DIY phone repair kit. So you'll get everything. So this isn't like the thing that they cobble together for Apple devices. This is like Mo- Motorola says, here are the things. Oh, neat. So that's good to see. 
And especially for something like, you know, again, with Android, it's like so hard because nothing is really uniform. So it's kind of a wide spread on something like that. Um, so we're talking about like things like the Moto Z Play um, or a Droid Turbo 2. So it's actually like kind of across the board for Motorola stuff. So I'm sure there's a lot of commonality between those. And you can even, I was surprised at the pricing, like the battery is only 35 bucks. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. I've looked at those prices in like a batteries plus and they're, they're not bad. They'll get you on the installation a little bit, probably. Yeah. Yeah, because they're really, cause that's a specialty. I mean, that's, that's not, not everybody can do that at mm. this point, right? So, um, and the thing is, if you do like your phone and mm. it is still somewhat supported and you could spend 150 bucks or something, get a battery put in the device mm-hmm. and get two or three more years out of it, it might be worth it. This is what happened with me and my laptop when it was going down last year. And I'm like, I'll drop the 600 bucks to put a new logic board in there, right? Because it's going to get some more, like a whole other year out of it. Right. So, hi. No, no, yeah, that's exactly what we do with phones. Thankfully, I have a mother-in-law that works for a company that taught her how to fix phones. Right. And then I mentioned the 5S with a brand new battery that's sitting over here because that's what they do. We, right. We... We 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 slide them our old hardware, which is just fine for them. They don't need to 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 edit a ten minute video on iMovie <laughs> like I do, right on their phone. But you know they, it's enough for them to do phone things and live on their phone, right? Um, and they can support them, fix mm-hmm. a crack screen, replace a battery, and give it more life. That's the biggest thing. It's the biggest thing. So I mean. Jumping from the 6S to a 8 Plus, other than screen size, was not a giant leap no, for performance. Battery, because it was old, but not performance. So, but that's where we're at right now. All right. Uh, Want to give a shout out. Um, nope, I just closed my thing again. I believe it's probably for our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling. Give me a nod on that so I can go ahead with that idea. Uh, Yes, uh, so Occupy Pro Wrestling, our friends over there, uh, Alex Cars at Alex Cars Media. Um, he is doing a really cool thing this month uh, where anything from their store over there at whatamaneuver.net is going to, go, going to be going to the Breast Cancer Awareness, um, I'm sorry, Bre- Breast Co- Cancer Research Foundation. My doc finally came back up. Um, and they've also released uh, merchandise with their logo and even have it in pink where all, 100% of all pre from those items will go to the BCRF. You can uh, check it all out at OccupyProWrestling.com and at WhatAManeuver.net and find out more about the Breast Cancer Research Foundation at BCRF.org. So thank you to Alex for, this, for uh, supporting the show and please go support him and Breast Cancer Awareness as well. Um, so coming up, uh, I want to give a shout out. Of course, we will be, um, doing a Pittsburgh current live a Thursday morning at 10 AM. Uh, we will do, be streaming from the Sorgatron media channels, um, on Wednesday night, probably around five 30 to eight ish. My mom will be here. I know she joins us in the chat room a lot. Um, I have determined that we're, I'm going to talk with her about Charlie Brown and the great pumpkin. And, uh, we're going to, to trick or treat. And I was hoping it would be nice out. I was actually going to do it out front of the studio. Uh, if we and you know, then do that thing. But uh, it sounds like it's going to be pretty rainy. So we're probably going to bring the party in here. Uh, so if anybody wants to swing by and help us hand out candy or anything like that and or talk about the Great Pumpkin, please do that. Uh, so thank you, everybody, uh, for that. And also some really cool stuff. Actually, if you want, if you're looking for something to do on Halloween night, there's the trick or treat here, there's a trunk or treat. That our group Bragg is doing um, down in the parking lot, just, just down from here, and uh, we are going to be at the end of the party uh, because Tolan FX is doing a Halloween bash as part of Romero Lives Month, so uh, that's going to be there. It's going to have wrestling. It's going to have a lot of uh, cool stuff, food, uh, food trucks and stuff. So please uh, come out for that. It's a really cool thing that's going on here in Beachview. Uh, you can find out more information. Uh, probably start at go to tolanfx dot com and look up Romero Lives. And uh, it's going to have information on that. And you'll actually see our studio on the map. Nice. <laughs> like we're pointing out and named on there. So that's, that's kind of fun too. Uh, other than that, I think that's the big thing for this week. Crazy Krause, thank you so much for joining us once again. Anytime you need me. Crazy Krause with the K's on the Twitters. Yes, sir. And of course, Chilla on the Twitters as well. 
Chillatech.net. John Chill on the Facebook. Yes. And uh, I'm at Sorgatron. Producer Missy, thank you for helping keep the show as smooth as possible, considering me as a host. Uh, thank you, everybody in the chat room, the chat room that's joining us. Dave Potter, I saw out there. Alex Carr is from Cali. Uh, Amanda, Steve uh, joining us as well. And everybody else that may have dropped in here through the uh, through the hour. Uh, we'll see you guys again. Well, actually, we will not be live live next Tuesday. Uh, we'll probably have a pre-recorded episode that I'm yet to figure out because we have some other stuff going on. Because actually, next week um, I will be involved with the uh, with the uh, election day watch party with Pittsburgh Current and the Incline uh, that I believe is going to be somewhere in Southside. Uh, so uh, there's a there's a Facebook group for that as well. Uh, so we'll be we'll be a little occupied. So uh, join that. Go vote. Don't worry about awesome cats. Go Amen. vote. Go vote. vote next week. What was that? What was that? I, I listened to the Daily Show. Don't boo. Go vote. So, a little message for you guys. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.